Hi guys, welcome back to yet another DIY sailboat refit video. This week I'm going to continue working on the new galley here aboard my Warrior 38 named Athena. The current state of Athena represents about four years worth of work, including a complete deck rebuild, a somewhat extensive osmosis treatment, a new vacuum infused rudder, and at least a partially gutted and rebuilt interior. And all of that stuff is documented in my videos right here on YouTube. Last week I built what I think is a pretty dang spiffy DIY heating solution for Athena. I'm gonna hold off a little bit on installing that heating solution here aboard Athena because I have a commercially available alternative coming in so I can do a little bit of a comparison. I figured that might be fun. So this week it is back to working on the galley. My original plan was to put a fridge over here here next to the sink. But Ava and I have changed our minds, now that area is just going to be storage, storage in the form of drawers. In order for us to fit a bigger and more well insulated fridge, the fridge has been moved to the kitchen island that's going to go here in the center of the boat. Before I can build that kitchen island, I need to build the giant diesel tank that's going to go here underneath the cabin sole. So that is a little bit further down on the to-do list. For now, like I said, it's back to the galley. Because the original plan was to build a fridge in here, I didn't make sure that this piece of plywood and the main bulkhead were absolutely parallel. And that poses a little bit of a challenge when I want to put in drawers. The easiest way I can figure around it is to build a box that's going to house the drawers. Pretty much identical to what I've done in here in the head, only much, much bigger of course. Let's go to the workshop. It would certainly have been easier just to go to Ikea. That was a lot of cotton. But now it should just be a matter of gluing and screwing the box together. A dab of West Systems 105 thickened with 406 should do the trick. The back of the box that's gonna go here should make sure that everything is nice and square. Yep, that looks perfect. And yet more thickened epoxy. This is going to be a ridiculously strong box. This is going to allow me to more easily line up the drawer slides in the top section up here. I've got the back way down. Thickened epoxy doesn't require a lot of clamping for it, so this should be plenty. It's the next day. The thickened epoxy should have cured enough that we can go ahead and see if this actually fits. Like a glove. You might be able to notice that there's a gap up here of about a millimeter and no gap down here. Now, once everything is in place and the door fronts are on here, you won't notice that difference. But with the box in place, I know that my drawer slides are going to be nice and parallel. The space that's down here below the drawers is designated for pots and pans, I believe. And I'm going to build another box that fits in here, but I don't think I'm going to be able to make that full width because I need to leave a little bit of room for this conduit in here. I've already built one box in this video and I think that's enough for on-camera boxes. So the second one I'm just going to build off camera. So let's switch topics now to how I'm going to drain these areas here underneath the galley. In the event that water pools down here, whether it be from leaks or from condensation, I want that water to drain to the bilge rather than just slushing around in here. So I'm going to have to drill some holes, but I want to protect the plywood here so water doesn't seep into it. And for that I'm going to use a technique called drill fill drill. I've drilled an oversized hole, a hole that's bigger than the final hole I want. Because I don't have access to the back of this piece of plywood yet, this is going to be a little bit tricky. So rather than applying a piece of tape to the back of this to seal it up to keep the thickened epoxy contained, I'm going to have to do something like this. A piece of plastic with a string. This does look a little bit silly, but the plastic and the string should do a great job of keeping the slightly thickened epoxy in place. Now there's one of those in each of the three little compartments. Once the thickened epoxy is cured, I can then go ahead and drill a hole in those, but that is going to have to wait until tomorrow.
is Friday night. As you have just seen, I've spent the last couple of days applying a couple of coats of epoxy primer and some Sigma Duo 520 to the inside areas in the galley. The last coat should hopefully be cured by tomorrow morning. This week, I would love to get started building the drawer fronts and the cabinet doors that's gonna go in the galley. So I've picked up some of this uh, Epay, Epay, also known as Brazilian Walnut. I think this will look really cool. I have never built a cabinet door or a drawer front before, so I'm very excited to try this. I love trying new stuff, especially when it means trying a new tool. In this case, a biscuit router or biscuit jointer. Some might argue that I could build cabinet doors and drawer fronts without one of these, and that would certainly be true, but where would the fun be in that? Like I said, I love trying new things. And also this thing was pretty cheap. I think I paid the equivalent of roughly 60 US dollars for this thing, so yeah, let's uh, take it for a quick spin. This might not be the most sophisticated way of joining together two pieces of wood, but it is certainly quick and easy. Here is what I'm picturing for at least the bigger of the drawer fronts. It's gonna be a frame made out of that Brazilian walnut, and then the space here inside of the frame is gonna get filled up by slats of the same wood, and it's all gonna be joined together by these biscuits. Like I said, there's definitely more sophisticated ways of joining together this frame, like for instance, some kind of tongue and groove setup, but I've always wanted to try working with these little biscuity thingies. And that is the basic frame cut. The uh, little latch or lock is gonna go up here. Now I need to hog out some material here, about half the thickness to make room for some slats. I would have loved to do this using a router bit. I don't have any of those, but fortunately there is more than one way to skin a cat. I've set up a little backstop here, so yeah, this should work. Well, that was uh, freaking terrifying. I am not gonna use this method for the rest of the drawer fronts. I'm gonna have to go out and find a router bit because uh, yeah, I kind of like having 10 fingers. <laughs> God dang it. This is why it's fun to try new stuff. It turns out the smallest biscuit I've got is the exact same width as the frickin' frame, which of course is no good. So I clearly have to come up with some improvement before I start mass producing drawer fronts and cabinet doors, but that's no excuse not to finish my little prototype here. I've set up a little jig for the biscuit jointer and I'm simply just gonna make the hole a little bit smaller than the smallest biscuit I've got. Now, because I had to make a smaller hole down here, of course, I also had to transform the smallest biscuit I had into a micro biscuit. Yeah, this is not the process I'm gonna go with. Even though I am probably not gonna use this prototype, I might as well go ahead and get it all glued together. At least by gluing this up, I'll still be able to use it to check my measurements to make sure that I'm happy with those and also to check the positioning of the little latchy lucky doohickey here. I'll leave this to cure overnight and we'll see what it looks like in the morning. Good morning, guys. Last night on the drive home, I started thinking about this frame and the wood that's gonna go inside of it. The Brazilian walnut does look a lot different than the wood I've used for the rest of the trim and also the laminated beam. And I started thinking maybe I should make that a feature, meaning maybe I should use the yellow bala or whatever it's called for the inside bit here. Doing this makes it seem a little bit more like a conscious choice. And I think the difference in color could look pretty cool once it's varnished. That's something I can keep in the back of my mind while I'm putting all of this together and see if I can agree with myself what I wanna do. Today, I would love to get these installed in here, get the tabletop here in place, and then get a front on this so that we can see what the final galley is gonna look like. The plywood tabletop is gonna get tabbed to the hull back here, and there's also gonna be insulation on the inside of the hull, so it's time to do a little bit of oh glorious sanding, which I know some of you guys have been waiting for.
when the boxes for the drawers go in over here, I can't really easily access the inside of the hull anymore. So before I put them in, I want to put up the insulation. A little paper template should make my life just a little bit easier. I've got a video where I talk a little bit about why I've chosen this type of installation. Instead of repeating all of that information, I'm just going to include a link in the description for that video. That looks like a reasonably good fit for the first layer. I can go ahead and get that adhered in place. And that is the second layer ready to get adhered in place. Now this is way, way more than we need just to combat condensation. But like I've mentioned before, we are going to spend some time in some very cold places. So I think this is all going to be worth it in the end. As you can hopefully see, I've been very careful not to get any kind of gaps along the sides or any kind of voids underneath the insulation. Through the magic of video editing, all the insulation is now in place. So far, thoroughly pleased with Armaflex. It's really easy to work with because it's a little bit flexible, so it's pretty easy to, to line it up so that you don't get any gaps. Before I go ahead and assemble any more of the galley, I better go ahead and run this conduit. That's going to be easier to do now. I just popped into the workshop to drop off the insulation and Martin had some oil and uh, look at this. I think that looks pretty dang spiffy. I think the combination of the two is a winner. I'm sure the added thickness of the paint is not going to make it any easier to get these in place. It was kind of a tight fit before. It looks like everything fits. I just need to put in the small box first because of the conduit. The boxes are not lined up perfectly yet. This is just a dry fit, but so far I am very pleased. I absolutely despise creaking and this would be very prone to that if I don't both glue and screw it in place. Now, because I've already painted the boxes using thick epoxy doesn't make a lot of sense. So instead I'm just gonna use a dab of Tech 7. This looks a little bit messy with all of that Tech 7 there, but that is going to get covered up by the front of the galley, so it doesn't really matter. Seeing as I've already opened this canister of Tech 7, I might as well use it for the countertop as well. It's the next day. The very last thing I did yesterday was just to put the front on the galley here and I used a little dab of epoxy thickened with 407 to cover up the screws. Most of the boat, including the galley, is going to get painted white, so simply just fairing over the screw holes and any small gaps is a perfectly acceptable solution. And I think the white galley is going to look super cool with the drawer fronts. So if you imagine the galley being all white and then the drawer fronts looking something like this, I think that's going to look pretty dang spiffy. The galley, at least the bottom half over here, is basically ready for paint. But the same is not true for the area where the stove is going to sit, because uh, I haven't mounted these yet, and that is because I need to run some PEX tube to the faucet to get hot and cold water. For me to do that, I first need to finish the vanity in here in the head, and I think that's on the to-do list for next week. The only thing left on my to-do list for this weekend is to get the tabletop here tabbed to the inside of the hull. In this case, I can set up the work area where I'm wetting out the fiberglass right next to where I'm putting the tabbing in place. That's so convenient rather than having to get up and down. And yeah, this is gonna be nice and comfortable. And that is the tabletop all glassed in place. That means I'm also ready to start building the little cabinets that's going to go behind here. 
Although the one that's here is going to pose a little bit of a challenge because the faucet is going to be here. So we can't just have a regular old door. We need to have something that slides up and out of the way somehow. Before ending this video, it would be really cool to give you guys a little update on the cement boat because they've found a little issue with their hull and that means part of the uh, rebar or whatever you want to call it is exposed and I thought that might be kind of cool to see and it just stopped raining. Let's uh, pop over there. Apparently diesel is the mortal enemy of a ferro cement hull. If you can see right there, there is a big open hole. And while that of course sucks for the good cement boat people because they now have a giant hole to fix in their boat, which is not a big deal by the way, it's kind of cool for the rest of us because we get to take a peek at the reinforcement. The hull itself only looks to be about a centimeter deep, but as you can see there is quite a bit of steel in there. And here is a different example where some of that reinforcement is exposed. Apparently there used to be a diesel tank located right above that giant hole. A diesel tank with a small leak that dripped onto the cement and over the years the cement got weakened to the point where when they took a hammer to it, it kind of just crumbled almost. That's terrifying and also very interesting. I'm sure showing you guys that is going to spark a little bit of a discussion about the merits of various hull materials down in the comment section. Now my personal preference is fiberglass because it's the easiest for me to work with and I also think it's the one with the lowest amount of maintenance. But whatever hull material you want to use or you have on your boat that's perfectly fine by me. Wood, steel, ferro cement or laminate, whatever floats your boat. I've got a little bit of tidying up to take care of here aboard Athena, so I'm going to end this video here and start rendering it for tonight. Next week is probably going to be back to working on the head with the vanity in there, or possibly the drawer fronts if I figure out how I want to build those. If you guys have any tips for making drawer fronts, I would love to hear them. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. But uh, other than that, that is going to be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.